Now, if you track with the channel, you know we are big fans of Knack and excited about the upcoming game, Knack 2. And today we've got Mark Cerny, creative director on the game, to talk about what's new in Knack 2. So what are the big differences you'd like to highlight? Well, we've, we've really been focusing on variety. So uh, the first game was uh, primarily combat. This time around, we've got combat, we've got puzzles, we've got a lot of platforming. Uh, there's even a couple modes uh, where you do rather different things, like drive a tank. And so the, the main mechanic of the game, you have this character, Knack, who changes in size as he kind of absorbs material from the world. How, how do the mechanics of that work? So the motivation for the first game was that, uh, just simply put, wouldn't it be nice if there was a character action game available for launch of PlayStation 4? And I've worked on a lot of uh, character action games over the years. The first Crash, the first Spyro, Jack, uh, Ratchet, about, I think, 13 or 14 of them over the years for Sony PlayStation. And so we thought, uh, this time around, let's do something a bit different with the character. Let's have a character that, that can grow in size, can pick up various parts and get bigger. Uh, and not only that, a character whose personality changes a bit based on the size. So when the character is, I don't know, two foot six, sort of a mascot-y feeling, or six feet tall, much more human feeling, or you know, gets to be 20 feet tall, sort of edging over into monster territory. Uh, and that was the origin of Knack. So with Knack, it was a launch title on PlayStation 4, but obviously we've got the PlayStation 4 Pro, enhanced visuals. How does the new game take advantage of that? There's a couple of different ways we take advantage of PS4 Pro. Uh, there's a high frame rate mode that's at 60 hertz most of the time, and uh, a mode for graphical quality you can also choose. Uh, in that case, the frame rate's the same as the standard PS4, but then you've got either much crisper graphics or graphics at uh, close to 4K, if you happen to own a 4K TV set. So that's nice for kind of high-end gamers, but I know my kids, who are big fans of the first game, are most excited about the full co-op mode that's coming in Knack 2. Could you talk a bit about how that's different from the first game? So Knack 1 did have co-op. Um, we chose to have a second character that wasn't Knack, a bit of an asymmetrical uh, type of gameplay there. With Knack 2, um, much more straightforward. There are two Knacks. He splits into two, Red Knack and Blue Knack, and uh, you play alongside each other. There really isn't such a thing as a single-player game or a, a, a co-op game. Uh, if you want to, just pick up a controller. Uh, as a second player, you can start any time. So uh, you'll notice I joined as Blue Knack. Um, for reasons of balance, both characters got a little stronger because the bigger Knack is, the tougher he is. Uh, so to keep the challenge about the same, we're each about three-quarters of the size that we were before. And uh, to show off some of those moves, so don't move, here we are. So that's turning the other player into sort of a machine gun. Yeah, hey, nice. Multi-punch on that player, or possible to detonate the other player. Um, some of these moves will do about triple damage of an ordinary single-player move, so they're, they're quite useful when you're playing co-op. And in terms of how it keeps both players on the screen, you fell off earlier, or someone fell off, and it, it carried on, so there's a degree of flexibility is there in terms of progressing. Yes, we've been, we've been very careful uh, with the camera setups uh, to uh, take care of both players. We pull back the camera slightly, um, and then um, we'll reframe the scenes a bit as well. Uh, oh, this is another thing that's new to um, NAC2, is there are these crystals you can break, and uh, you become invincible for 10 seconds. As long as the music plays, uh, you have a different move set, and you can't be damaged. And so the challenge there is to take care of as many enemies as possible while you're strong, because it's a lot easier to do uh, than uh, after the music stops and you go back to your normal uh, vulnerable state and your normal moveset. And in terms of difficulty, my kids are different ages, and the older, the older, my older son got through the game relatively easily first time, but his, his younger siblings struggled. Is there difficulty settings, and is that different this time around or similar? The approach, is, the approach is quite different. There's difficulty settings from easy through very hard. Uh, for easy, you actually take a different path through the game. You can see here on the right is the path you'd take on easy, because we've noticed that some of the players who are not as familiar with games have a lot of difficulty with platforming. Uh, but on normal, hard, and, and very hard, you, you do the full platforming experience. The difference between those is the motion of the platforms gets progressively more complex. They'll actually get faster on the higher difficulty settings. And as we started the interview, you mentioned a whole host of games that are kind of family names that you've worked on. How has the experience and knowledge 
of those games being brought into now? Well, um, there's a bit of Crash Bandicoot inspiration here. Becoming Invulnerable is actually, um, our thought was to have something like the Aku Aku masks in the in the Crash series, where when you pick up three masks, the music plays and you get, in that case, you get faster as well as being invulnerable. Um, as far as other titles go, uh, it's always been fun to work in the Ratchet and Clank universe because there's so much diversity and what Ratchet can do is so varied. And we've tried to bring that sort of diversity to NAC 2 in the player's moveset. Um, if, you, uh, if you hit the touchpad, you can see the skill tree uh, that uh, Knack has. Um, there's about 35 different things that Knack can learn or um, learn to chain together or make more powerful or make faster as he goes through the game. And is that, you had, you had enhancements I think last time with a sort of series of cards you collected. Is that different in how it, how it functions in Knack 2? Cards that you pick up allow you to uh, unlock gadgets and those same treasure chests contain uh, gems that you can use uh, if you collect enough of them to unlock a special version of Knack. And we, we've kept that. We've changed what the gadgets are and we've changed what the special versions of Knack can do. But all of that is a very different direction than the moveset, which is what I was talking about, where your combat moves um, start about double the complexity of the first Knack and then continue to grow throughout the game. So for the moveset, uh, we tried to come up with moves that would be surprising for what Knack can do. So, for example, by this point in the game, Knack has learned how to do the hook shot. He can reach out and uh, stretch his arm out about 15 feet. Nice, I like that. Reel in an enemy. Uh, and I mean, you could use that on any enemy, but it's particularly useful um, when there are enemies who are prepared for Knack's attack. You can see the guys with the swords, they will raise those swords. And it's very hard to go get to them because they'll attack as soon as Knack walks towards them. But uh, if you have, if you use the hook shot, you can reel them into range and uh, and then take care of them. And so you need to use those moves intelligently with different enemies. I quite like that idea. On the harder difficulty settings, there's definitely a bit of strategy. Uh, so let me show off. One of the moves that Knack can do is parry, where he can knock enemies shots right back at them. Nice! Probably the, the most satisfying thing in Knack's moveset. Uh, there's the hook shot where Knack can grab enemies and pull them into range and then pummel them. And so these moves, do they, you, you get them unlocked, but they also become more powerful today as you progress? You have, yes, um, I'm picking up relic energy from the treasure chests. I also get it by defeating enemies. Uh, and I can go um, into this screen and then spend that relic energy on speeding up current moves or making moves more powerful or getting the ability to chain moves or uh, buying brand new moves or enhancement to moves. There's about 35 things that Nat can purchase. A big part of the enjoyment of the first game for my kids was the storytelling and the kind of Pixar quality cutscenes and the characters that they really strongly identified with. Now I, I know that just doesn't happen by accident. How, how did you get that so good in the first game and how's that going to compare in Knack 2? Well I think Knack 2's story will end up being quite a bit better than Knack 1. Uh, Knack 1 I wrote the script, uh, reactions were somewhat mixed. Uh, for Knack 2 we brought on Marianne Krasik who's a BAFTA award winning screenwriter. She got her BAFTA for the God of War series. And so she has all kinds of nice touches that she put in the story. So for example in this level uh, Knack is traveling with Lucas, his best friend and Ryder who is Lucas's uh, uncle and Ryder's X does not want to see Ryder. She's actually built this fortress with spotlights and barbed wire and killer attack robots simply to keep him out. And uh, Knack has to go through all those obstacles because Knack needs to recruit her help uh, in their quest. And one of the fun things here, there's a lot of little dialogue, but one of the fun things here is the, the, the robots that you encounter aren't even trying to take Knack out, at least not at first. They are squarely focused on, uh, on Ryder and taking care of him. That's their, that's their purpose for being there. 
Uh, there's that more of an element of stealth at this level compared to the sort of full-on attacking previously? Yes, uh, there's certainly uh, an element of stealth to this level. Um, you uh, don't want to get caught under the um, searchlights, as Ryder s says. It definitely will sting. And that lets us have a little bit of puzzle element here, getting, for example, under these flower beds as small Mac to avoid the spotlights. Yes, I remember that from the first game. Although you could be big, sometimes there's an advantage in being small again. And again, I think my kids identified with that, the sort of the fact that the littlest guy wasn't always the weakest. So in, in Act 2, you have uh, control over Knack's size in that you can become little Knack at any time. Uh, it's, it's quite useful. For example, uh, in this puzzle here, uh, I will need to have Knack become small so he can hide. I'll need to have him big so I can move the flower bed. And then I'll need to have him become small again so I can do uh, this little bit of uh, platforming here. So um, if you're doing that in co-op, I guess one of you could be small Knack and one of you could be big. You could cooperate like that. Yes, uh, I mean, if you're playing in co-op, uh, because the Knacks can be different sizes and uh, even in different states, uh, the you can take faster approaches to some of the puzzles. And in terms of the length of the game, is it a similar size experience? Mostly it depends how quickly you progress through it, and it's hard to measure game length, but how does it compare? In terms of hours of play, Knack 2 is about the same length as Knack 1, but I mean, there's a lot more variety in the game. It's, it's physically longer, it's just that you're making a bit faster progress through all of the stages. You know, one of the fun things about this as a genre is uh, all of the different places you get to go in a in a character action game. I mean, in the old days, that would be the lava level and the ice level. I mean, these days, players are a bit more sophisticated. We need a bit more of a story rationale for bringing you there as a player. But it still is is fun to have those discussions with the team of, OK, this next set of levels, where can we set that, and how does that affect the gameplay? And in terms of once you've finished it, are there reasons to go back and play it again? There's a, there's a lot of replayability. Um, there are challenges in the game, 143 different challenges you can earn medals for, playing levels fast, finding secrets and the like, the medals uh, tie into the trophy system. There's also, once you finish the game, you can go and do what we call extra content, which is things like um, uh, sort of racing levels or uh, gladiatorial combat levels. So similar gameplay, but um, the specifics of the challenge are presented somewhat differently. So in this section of gameplay, uh, Knack has been facing tough enemies, they're tanks, and at this point he figures out that there's a different way to approach these challenges, which is to uh, take out the little goblin that's driving the tank, and uh, take control, and drive it himself. Oh nice, you get to drive the tank yourself. And our, our principle for co-op play is that um, the second player is never a bystander, always involved in gameplay. So uh, in single player play, um, Knack both controls the weapons and um, also uh, drives the tank. In two-player play, one player drives the tank, the other player has the weapons console. And uh, cooperation is definitely needed to uh, get past the enemies. Both players are going to need to talk to each other to plan which ones are going to take out first. Yes, definitely uh, a bit of, of uh, conversation back and forth is needed to get through. And then being in the tank, the enemies we're seeing here seem absolutely huge, so obviously you're able to then take on much bigger, bigger foes. Yeah, some of the enemies that you face in this level are a bit larger than uh, human size. Well, it looks really good, and, but I think the main thing my kids are going to be asking me is when can they get hold of it? So has it got a firm release date and price yet? Release date is September 6th, and the price in the UK is 29.99. Great, we'll look forward to getting our hands on it at home, but today, thanks a lot for your time, and it's been, it's been great. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much.